Over 26 years ago, June 12, 1993 to be precise, Nigerians went to the polls in the Third Republic of their democratic journey to elect a president. On that day, the two major political parties, Social Democratic Party, SDP, and National Republican Convention, NRC, fielded candidates. The standard bearers were business tycoon Moshut Kashimau Olawali Abiola, SDP, and al Haji Bashir Uthman Tufa, NRC. Unfortunately, the election was annulled when results already indicated a massive victory for Abiola. Notwithstanding the controversial annulment of the election, the 1993 presidential polls has several uniqueness. One of its uniqueness was that it was the first election monitored by a group of observers in Nigeria, even though the culture of election monitoring began in Romania in 1857. The first election in Nigeria took place in 1922, over 97 years ago. In February 1993, scroll of history was filled when some leaders and members of some non-governmental organizations converged on Ota in Ogun State, southwest Nigeria, and in a manner reminiscent of the activities of pathfinders, launched the first election monitoring body, the Nigerian Elections Monitoring Group, NEMG, with the active involvement of the defunct Center for Democratic Studies, CDS, and financial support from the Canadian government. The group drew up plans and monitored the June 12, 1993 presidential election. Eleven days after the election, June 23, 1993 to be precise, the then military government rolled out a decree cancelling the polls and suspending the then electoral body, National Electoral Commission, NEC, under Professor Humphrey Wosu. With this development very disturbing, the facts about the conduct and outcome of the election was shrouded in mystery. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair and peaceful. However, there was in fact a huge array of electoral practices virtually in all the states of the Federation before the actual voting began. But the Nigerian Election Monitoring Group came to the rescue of the nation. It released its report. The turnout was impressive if compared with past standards. No evidence of violence across the country. No vote rigging that marred previous rounds of balloting. The election was a turning point for Nigeria's politics as ethnicity and religious differences took a backstage. The election was adjudged credible and devoid of electoral malpractice. The election was the freest and fairest in Nigerian political history. Until June 6, 2018, when President Muhammadu Buhari declared June 12 as the Democracy Day in Nigeria, the only basis to analyze the election held on that day in 1993 were the findings of the Nigerian Election Monitoring Group, NEMG. There are some established presumptions from this development in 1993 the legitimacy and general acceptability of an election can be determined by the criticisms, findings and recommendations of election observers and monitors if they are seen as unbiased. Election monitoring helps to assess the conduct of an electoral process on the basis of national laws and international election standards. Election observation do not prevent electoral fraud but exposes such malfeasance. Election monitoring usually spans over a long period of time on the entire election process and not only election day proceedings helps to provide timely and accurate information. Election monitors and observers act as watchdog on the activities of electoral managers, electoral bodies, police and allied security agencies, among others. More than anything, the trailblazing efforts of the defunct Nigerian Election Monitoring Group helped to institutionalize and expand significantly the culture of election observation activities in Nigeria, particularly in the new dispensation. 
Elections in Nigeria are the means of choosing representatives to the government at the center, various states, and local governments. The last round of general elections in Nigeria, held on February 23 and March 9, 2019. For the elections, the Apex Electoral Body, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, accredited 144 groups, both local and international, as observers and monitors. Simply put, international observations by such groups, such as European Union, EU, Commonwealth Secretariat, African Union, AU, Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, National Democratic Institute, NDI, complemented the domestic observer groups, which are citizen organizations or coalitions of organizations. Essentially, most of the accredited observers began their activities several months before the election days. They monitored the entire electoral process, including, but not limited to, the party primaries, the legal framework, the media situation, the activities of the electoral managers, electioneering, campaign environment, polling day activities, voting, vote counting, and tabulation of results, amongst others. Post-election day, the release of results, the seating of election tribunals, and the mood of the nation. It is interesting to note that majority of the notable observers compiled their findings, which were made public in reports issued after the elections. There is a consensus among the international and domestic observers that the conduct of the 2019 elections demonstrated that Nigeria, as the member of the Committee of Democratic Nations, has taken a major step backward in simple language. The monitoring groups, except a few, give the poll a dismal assessment. In fact, the reports were damning. So far, Nigeria has had two decades of uninterrupted democracy. Most of these major observer groups had been part of Nigeria's democratic process since 1999. Except a few, majority of the notable groups did not mince words that the election fell far below expectations. The reports of groups raised critical issues about the seeming endless challenges of holding credible, free, popular, violence-free and fair elections in Nigeria. For instance, the final report of the European Union Election Observation Mission was a confirmation of the growing worrisomeness that credible polls is still a mere wish in the country. We can say positively that we note that the elections were competitive and parties were able to campaign with freedom of assembly, expression and movement largely respected in the country. The very, the very effective role played by civil society organizations in promoting election reforms and contributing to accountability of the process was very important <coughs> and need to continue. However, overall the 19 elections showed that the need for fundamental electoral reform so that future elections better serve the interests of all Nigerians. As we already noted in our preliminary statements earlier in the, in the year, the elections were marked by severe operational and transparency shortcomings, electoral security problems and low turnout. Unfortunately, leading parties were at fault in not reigning in act of violence and intimidation by their supporters and in abusing incumbency at federal and state level. Except for fed federal radio, our media monitoring found that state media primarily served the interest of the president or the gov governor at state level. Journalists were subject to harassment and scrutiny of the electoral process was at time compromised with some independent observers being obstructed in their work, including by security agencies. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, there is an, an, an urgent need 
to improve the electoral process and to restore faith in the system. Without this, there is a risk of uncountable leadership in the country and citizen disengagement. Such electoral reform needs political leadership that is dedicated to the right of Nigerian citizens and an inclusive process of national dialogue involving state institutions, political parties, civil society, and of course, the media. This, need, this needs to be urgently undertaken to allow time for debates, legislative changes, and implementation. The European Union team means no word in condemning the suspension and subsequent retirement of the Chief Justice of Nigeria. In the report, the EU observers said the suspension of the Chief Justice of Nigeria by the President a few weeks before the elections was seen to lack due process and undermine judicial independence. On the conduct of the elections, the report reads in part, Nigeria's 2019 elections were marked by severe operational and transparency shortcomings, electoral security problems, and low turnout. The last-minute postponement of the elections put an undue burden on voters, result collation procedures were not sufficiently robust, and inadequate information was provided to the public. INEC worked in a complex security and politically charged environment with its premises and officials subject to fiscal attack and intimidation. Even though the commission made a number of improvements, but procedural weakness continued, including in regard to sufficient transparency measures, checks and transparency in the results process. The elections became increasingly marred by violence and intimidation. This harmed the integrity of the electoral process and may deter future participation. Fatalities escalated and the role of security agencies became increasingly contentious. The finding of the EU election observation mission on killings and intimidation in a way confirmed the widely held view that election violence in Nigeria has been a major dent in her democratic sojourn. It has become symptomatic of flawed and ethically deficient electoral process. The 2019 elections can therefore not be said to be free and fair when they have turned out to be a blood-stained political contest for power. The studied events of 2019 general elections did not come as a surprise to a number of political observers given the several and severe actions of the incumbent at national level to restrict the political space and electoral choice through the deployment of obscene acts which impede level playing ground for the opposition and general official high-handedness. The same conclusion could be deduced from the report of both the US-based International Republican Institute, IRI, and the National Democratic Institute, NDI. Part of the report of the two US-based pro-democracy bodies reads, The 2019 general elections fell significantly short of standards set in 2015. Citizens' confidence in the elections was shaken and election stakeholders should take concrete steps to address the concerns of citizens with regards to the polls in order to rekindle their faith in the power and possibility of credible elections. The IRI and NDI observation mission concluded that the 2019 elections did not meet the expectations of many Nigerians. The IRI and NDI mission identified a number of key issues related to the 2019 process. To start, I'll discuss the Nigerian-led initiatives that contributed positively to the process. In preparation for the 2019 polls, Nigerians sought to increase citizen participation, particularly that of marginalized populations, to enhance confidence in the elections and minimize the risk of electoral violence. The Not Too Young to Run campaign, led by a coalition of civil society organizations, resulted in the constitutional amendment that lowered the minimum age limit for elected officials at the national, state, and local levels. The percentage of youth candidates subsequently increased from 21% in 2015 to over 34% in 2019. Oh, it's not on. The number of women candidates also increased, and six women ran for president. The Access Nigeria campaign also resulted in the use of the Braille ballot guide, which supported visually impaired Nigerians to vote on election day. Several citizen organizations 
and networks monitored very various aspects of the electoral process, demonstrating a significant commitment to strengthening democratic institutions and processes in Nigeria. With regards to election administration, ahead of the 2019 polls, INEC instituted several reforms, including simultane simultaneous accreditation and voting, the posting of results at polling units, improved voter verification technologies, a more robust review of dis and disciplinary process for INEC staff, and enhancement of ballot secrecy and measures to reduce vote buying. In January 2018, more than a year before the polls, INEC released an elections timetable and had, but had trouble following it due to delayed allocation of electoral funds, failed attempts to reform the electoral legal framework, and numerous pre-election disputes over political party primaries that delayed ballot production. The last-minute postponement of elections on the morning of February 16th and delays in opening some polling units and other administrative challenges on February 23rd undermined public confidence in INEC. The Commission did not communicate sufficiently with political parties and the public about election preparations, and such a late postponement likely depressed voter turnout and created confusion about the duration of candidate and party campaigning. While INEC distributed materials and open polls in a more timely fashion on March 9th, Many serious irregularities occurred, including vote buying, intimidation of voters and election officials, and election-related violence. Both polls, however, were administered generally in accordance with election procedures. On to the role of political parties. Political parties remain the weakest link among Nigeria's nascent democratic institutions. Candidate nomination processes were opaque and reportedly plagued by, by vote buying, rigging, and confusion over the location of the primaries and who could participate in them. In some instances, party leadership submitted candidate lists to INEC with nominees who had not won their primaries. Intra- and inter-party disputes over the primaries led to violence in some states and more than 800 court cases, many of which were not settled by Election Day. The paucity of women and youth nominated to run on the tickets of the two major parties, the APC and PDP, demonstrated Niger Nigerian political elite's lack of commitment to opening space for new, new faces and new voices. Women now hold, hold only 3.8% of seats in the National Assembly, the lowest level of women's representation in any le legislature in sub-Saharan Africa. Ahead of the 2019 polls, the poor security situation in Nigeria raised concern about the safety of voters and candidates. To ease rising tensions, the National Peace Committee convened political parties and their presidential candidates to sign two peace accords. Despite these accords, politically motivated violence rose and political actors used increasingly <coughs> inflammatory language as Election Day approached. While, while voting was generally peaceful in most of the country, at some polling units, party agents and other party supporters disrupted voting, intimidated voters, and destroyed voting materials. Party agents also acted with impunity in assisting voters to mark their ballots and violating the secrecy of the ballot. During the March 9th polls, most police and unarmed security did conduct themselves with restraint. However, credible citizen observer groups expressed grave concern over the heavy military presence in some areas and disruptions that contributed to many canceled votes, inconclusive election results, and the need to conduct supplementary elections for some contests. Money has also played a corrosive role in Nigeria's political system. During off-cycle elections in Oshun and Akita states, citizen observers raised concerns about the increasing and increasingly brazen practice of vote buying. In an attempt to curb the practice, INEC instituted new measures to protect the secrecy of the ballot, including prohibiting the use of cell phones in the voting booth and rearranging the layout of polling units. Still, during the February 23rd and March 9th polls, our observers witnessed vote buying at polling units as well as party agents assisting voters in marking their ballots. Finally, on electoral reform, as you all know, in 2018, the National Assembly approved four versions of a bill to amend the Electoral Act. The President's last rejection, rejection of the bill in December 2018, just a couple of months before Election Day, surprised most stakeholders and delayed the release of INEX election guidelines. Other legal reforms to the electoral process were unrealized before the 2019 elections, including creating appropriate institutions to oversee political parties and prosecute electoral offenses all responsibilities that currently impede INEC's focus on administering elections. The Nigerian-based Situation Room, a coalition of 72 pro-democracy bodies, was also unsparing in exposing the fact that the 2019 elections failed to meet the threshold for a credible election. No doubt, this poses serious questions about the future of elections 
and quality of democracy in Nigeria. If the president had signed the Electoral Act Amendment Law, uh, there would not be no confusion at this time as to whether there was an annex server or not. That's right. If the election, uh, Electoral Act Amendment was uh, signed into law, and again, with hindsight, we worry really what the real reason was uh, that the Electoral Act Amendment Bill was not signed into law before the elections. Uh, the whole idea of electronic transmission of results was the foundation on which that Electoral Act Amendment Bill was proposed. And we um, worry that the failure to have signed it uh, is why we have this question about whether there was uh, an INEX server or not, and whether there was electronic transmission of results or not. But we also know that there were several other provisions in the law, uh, including uh, safeguards regarding uh, the use of the smart card readers, electronic transmission of results, accountability of um, uh, state institutions and agencies uh, on the elections that were not signed into law. And we believe that this should be signed into law by the president. Uh, this should not detract, of course, from the larger conversation about implementing far-reaching electoral reforms. One of the things that we do not want to deal with ahead of 2023 is to be having a conversation about electoral reforms uh, too close to elections. So we think that this is early enough for this conversation to begin. Situation Room notes, and we quote, The presidential election was a setback from the 2015 general election. It called for actions to be taken to identify what went wrong and what could be corrected. INEC operations fell short of its identified role and obligations in the threshold document. Logistical and operational challenges marred the credible conduct of the elections. The first sign of this flaw manifested with the shock and unexpected postponement of the election in the early hours of the very day they were to begin, on Saturday, February 16, 2019. Postponing voting about six hours to the start of polls did not only expose an ill-prepared INEC, it also dampened the nationwide enthusiasm that had built up for the elections. It made it impossible for many who had travelled earlier to vote in their constituencies to make a second trip, worsening voter apathy. The collation of results, another major weakness of Nigerian elections, remained a concern throughout the elections with observers reporting interference with the process, especially by political parties and security agencies, oftentimes with the active participation of INEC officials. Data in the voter register, as well as results declared by INEC, threw up several glaring discrepancies that have yet to be explained. There were differences between the number of accredited voters and the total number of votes cast in many polling units. A scrutiny of the registration numbers given by INEC reveals discrepancies between the total number of registered voters before the election and the total number of registered voters announced by INEC during the collation in 30 of Nigeria's 36 states. Many of the lapses that were observed could have been taken care of if the Electoral Act amendment passed by the National Assembly had been signed into law and put into use. In spite of the postponement and assurances by INEC on its readiness, major shortcomings still undermined the conduct of the elections. There were significant delays to the start of voting due to challenges in deploying men and material, and many cases where materials supplied to polling units were incomplete, perceived in some quarters as deliberate acts of vote suppression. Reports received by the Situation Room from its network of observers and partner organizations indicated that INEC officials and materials did not reach a significant number of polling stations across the country until about 11 a.m. Voting ended late in many places, delaying collation and leaving room for malpractices. More so, the election day was characterized by localized incidents of voter intimidation, ballot box snatching, and destruction and general voter apathy as the national voter turnout rate dipped from 43.7% in 2015 to just 35.6%.
Situation Room acknowledges the effort made by INEC towards building an accurate and inclusive register through its continuous voter registration, the public verification of the register, and the issuance of voter cards. However, there were still identified challenges and tedious processes that proved to be a challenge for citizens seeking to register or collect their PVCs. The Situation Room observers noted military involvement in the elections outside of the limits allowed by law. The Electoral Act specifically states that military involvement in the elections shall only be at the request of INEC and only for the purpose of securing the distribution and delivery of election materials and protection of election officials. The threshold document called for security deployment that was under the operational control of INEC in accordance with the provisions of the Electoral Act. In apparent contravention of this, Troops were deployed nationwide during the elections without any clear coordination with INEC. In River State, the military posed significant challenges and obstruction to the performance of election duties by INEC officials. Situation Room received reports of incidents of partisan involvement in the elections by the military, particularly in River State. There are questions about the role played by the executive arm of government as well as other state institutions such as the military and the security services and their negative effect on the credibility of the elections. The security forces, especially the Department of State Services, the state security police, but also the military and police on many occasions put themselves in overbearing roles on behalf of partisan interests. The Election Day report of another notable group, Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, is not different from those of orders. The CDD Analysis Center notes, and I quote, Violence marred the polls in some areas in Lagos, Ebony, Imo, Rivers, Oyo, Oshun, Delta, Kogi, and Akwaibom. Ballot box snatching and vote disruption severally dampened morale in the affected states. We express concern about the killing and adoption of election officials. End of quote. The CDD's report re-emphasizes the fact that violence which robs an election of credibility has sadly become part of the tradition of elections in Nigeria. But the bloody violence witnessed on February 23 presidential elections is worrisome. Peace accord was observed in Bridge. The other challenges include compromised INEC officials as well as partisan security operatives. All these raise critical concerns. Yeah, I think it's very, very important for INEC to actually publish disaggregated report uh, results according to polling units, number of registered voters, number of cancelled votes, reasons for cancellation because it gives room for more transparency. What it does is that it allows you and I to all go back and verify the results after the elections. An opaque system where they just give a result at the end of the day and that result we are not able to drill down to know how it's emanated, what and what is included, what is excluded, is not favorable towards instilling trust or further uh, boosting integrity in our electoral system and democracy in itself. Management of logistics is very, very key, especially when you are talking in terms of uh, coalition uh, process. Logistics from the ad hoc staff who are putting together all these results to ensure that they have they have made uh, comfortable enough, they have transportation to take them to the collision um, center to ensure that they have lightning so that they are able to properly collate, that they are not even fatigued while doing this. And everything that is actually provided for in terms of security gets to them and all electoral materials are adequate at that point. But what is also very important is that the rules should actually be clear and follow when it comes to INEC. The rules should be clear and follow. We have to know what exactly, how the process are people meant to go directly from the polling unit to the ward level, from the ward level to the local government level, state level, and pres um, in the presidential election, we come to the presidential coalition center. One should not actually be jumped in favor of the order or things opaquely done when people do not even know what this process really are. It is not timely done. It allows for a lot of manipulations 
or perception of manipulations to be gleaned from the process. Now, what is also very important is also the fact that in the last election, we witnessed a lot of intimidation of coalition staff, observers, and media by the security agencies, political parties, our talks as well. In order to have a level playing field and we have what we call free, fair and credible elections, this is something that must stop and it must not even rear its head up ahead in the Kogi and the Bayesa and other off-cycle elections before we get to the 2023 election itself. There are these kind of actions where we do not put enough eyes, we do not do things the way they are, the capacity to even do the work is actually missing. It kind of skewed the whole process. The transparency that is meant to come out of the process doesn't. This was an election where we witnessed many of the uh, coalition officers disappearing for more than 20 hours in several of the world coalition. Some on their own, aside from people who were not aware of of where the coalition um, why place is meant to be. Some on their own chose to circumvent the process, not where there are insecurity. And in several areas, we saw that there was so much incompetency, such that some results that will be declared fraudulent or be, be pleaded fraudulent in petition are not even fraudulent, but as a result of human error, lack of capacity, arithmetical error that actually occurred in terms of the collation of the whole process. No. It's, it's not when a matter is tribunal, uh, it's already in the tribunal, that is subjudice. But the fact must be told that this is the most chaotic collision process we have witnessed. We saw areas where people were daggered on fighting over collision in the just concluded um, elections. We saw where collision was disrupted both by state actors and non-state actors. We witnessed a lot of intimidation of not just of our observers, media and even collision officers. All this thwarts the integrity of an election. Election is not just about outcome. I think what we should get right as a country is not to be laying emphasis on the outcome, but the processes that actually lead to this outcome are very, very key. All these raise critical questions. One, was the election conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act, the Electoral Guidelines, and Electoral Manuals? Two, could the identified electoral malfeasance be thrown away with a wave of hand? And three, on the basis of the shortcomings identified by the observer groups and monitors, could the election be valid? The 2019 elections did not meet the expectations of many Nigerians and fell significantly short of standards set in 2015. The last-minute postponement of the presidential and national assembly elections on the morning of February 16, and delays in opening some polling units and other administrative challenges on February 23, undermined public confidence in INEC and dampened nationwide enthusiasm built for the polls. There were electoral irregularities, including destruction of ballots already cast by hoodlums in opposition strongholds, vote buying, intimidation of voters and election officials, burning of election materials, ballot snatching and stuffing, and disruption of voting process, widespread election-related and bloodletting violence, as well as killing of innocent 626 souls, flagrant partisanship of security agencies, which undermined the credibility of the elections. Citizens' confidence in elections was shaken. Logistical and operational inefficiencies of the electoral managers, card reader malfunctions, and late delivery of electoral materials marred the credibility of the polls. Though several political parties fielded candidates, the polls were largely a contest between APC and PDP. The removal and subsequent retirement of Chief Justice of the Federation, Justice Walter Onoge, was in bad faith. Though election is not war and should never be adjudged as a do-or-die affair, the polling collision centers and opposition strongholds were over-militarized and security operatives were culpable in the identified electoral malpractices. No legal backing for the use of card reader and electronic transmission of results from polling units. 
unimpressive turnout of voters due to apathy as the national voter turnout rate dropped from 43.7% in 2015 to just 35.6% in 2019. Established discrepancies in voters' register collated results due to interference and suppression of votes. Lack of transparency in the conduct of party primaries. Limited impact of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security. Limited opportunities for women, internally displaced voters and persons with disabilities. On a positive note, however, the report of one of the observer groups, Situation Room, stated that the elections were ones in which citizens were determined and mobilized to exercise their voting rights. But it equally added that a positive excitement was truncated by unexpected postponement of elections from the initial date set. Irregularities, violence, militarization, compromised INEC officials and partisan security agencies. Most of the reports were in perfect agreement that the systemic feelings seen in the elections are indications of the urgent need for fundamental electoral reforms. One uniqueness about the report was that there are several recommendations which, if implemented, elections in Nigeria in future will meet the credibility threshold. There is a need for a national conversation to address the concerns of the citizens in order to rekindle their faith in the power and possibility of credible elections. All critical stakeholders and INEC should immediately commence the push for reforms in the electoral process. The Electoral Amendment Bill passed by the National Assembly and declined by the President should be reintroduced, passed and transmitted to the President for assent. Credible implementation of all the recommendations of 2008 Justice Mohammed Uwais panel report. Electoral Offences Commission should be established. Reconsider the order and timing of general elections. Complete constituency delimitation and designate polling units one year before the polls. Make the continuous voter registration process more accessible to voters. Independent inquiry into the poor management of the electoral process by INEC in the conduct of 2019 elections. Nigeria's election is very expensive. It is important to open up national conversation on how to achieve sustainable costs. Constitutional and electoral reforms to curtail multiple number of parties on the ballot. A probe of the failure of smart card readers in all the identified polling units. An overhaul of the processes and systems for procurement and logistics for elections. An end to contrived voter suppression. INEC and security agencies to ensure accountability for acts inimical to the integrity and credibility of future polls. Organizational and operational capacity within INEC should be strengthened. Improve the system of collection of permanent voter cards. Legal requirements be established for transparent procedures for the tabulation, transmission and announcement of results as a way of improving integrity and confidence in the electoral outcomes. Improvement of the voter registration system with the development of a voter register that guarantees accuracy and inclusiveness. Concrete steps to strengthen legal requirements for integrity and transparency in party primaries and resolution of internal disputes. Transform the National Broadcasting Commission into a genuinely independent media regulatory body. Ensuring transparency of the activities of interagency body responsible for electoral security works. Establish time limits for the adjudication of pre-election petitions to ensure judgments before election day. Reduce the length of time allowed for post-election disputes to ensure that majority of petitions are adjudicated fully before those rightly elected assume office. Create a process that facilitates suffrage for those on duty on election day. Globally, elections are a critical pillar of democracy and good governance. It is an acknowledged fact that free, fair and credible elections enjoy legitimacy and acceptance. If the reports released by the notable election monitoring and observation groups, both local and international, is anything to go by, the 2019 elections fell below the acceptable threshold. Indeed, they confirmed the widely held view 
that elections have been a sour point of Nigeria's democracy. Thank you.